Hello and welcome to Touch Plus. My name is Martin Perhiniak. In this video, I'm going to talk about the color modes available in Photoshop. Now, you probably heard about some of these uh, color modes like RGB or CMYK, but in this video, I would like to make sure that we go through all of the available color modes and you will understand which one to use for what and also how they really work. So before we dive into uh, going through all of these color modes, I would like to show you a couple of things here in Photoshop, which is very useful to also know whenever we deal with color modes. First of all, it's good to have the channels panel open to understand how these color modes work, which you can always find under the window menu if you don't have it open. And you can also right click anywhere here in the channels panel and uh, switch to large. So you will have larger images or thumbnails for each of the channels. Now we are in RGB mode at the moment, which is red, green, blue, and we can see those three channels here. And for example, if I want to see them one by one, I can do that by simply going through it. And the way it works is that it shows us uh, with bright colors, in this case, uh, mainly white, wherever we have a high intensity of the selected channel. So for example, blue is mainly visible on the helmet. And if I select red, that's most intense on the bike. But if I start combining uh, these channels, for example, the red and green by holding down shift, we can see how they start to mix together. So these are the red and green colors uh, in the image without the blue colors. So if I add that as well, I can see how all of the three channels will work together. If I switch to CMYK, for example, let me just do that quickly. I will see that now we have four channels, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And I will talk about the difference in more details between these two color modes. But what you just have to see now at the moment is that we have one more channel whenever we work in CMYK. And that's why some of the filters won't work in this mode. And also a couple of other things that you will be able to use in RGB only. Plus, CMYK also has a higher file size or bigger file size. So let's just keep an eye on the file size here at the bottom. As the CMYK version is 10 megabytes, if I go back to RGB, it switches back to 7.5. So it's 25% larger, the CMYK image, because of that extra fourth channel. Apart from the channels panel, there's another useful way to understand how color modes work by clicking on the color picker uh, or the foreground or the background swatch. And from this, we will be able to see all the color values. Uh, we will see RGB, CMYK, lab, also the six digit hexa code for web and the HSB values as well. Now, HSB is not a color mode. These other three are color modes. So HSB is something that you can't convert your image into, but it is a very useful way to describe color because it's using the hue, a saturation and the brightness. So the hue is like the hue wheel here on the right, which is um, set to 360 different uh, values, which is uh, represented with these degrees from zero to 360 on the top. And then saturation is uh, represented with percentage. From left to right, we increase the saturation. And from bottom to top, we increase the brightness, which is again uh, uh, represented with the percentage. Now, RGB works in another way that again has 256 different values for each of the uh, channels, the red, green, and blue. And if I go to the bottom left, that's the darkest color, which will be zero on all three channels. And if I go to the top uh, left, that will be the brightest color, the white, which will be all 255 for each of these values. And the reason why I said 256, because zero is the 256 uh, value for red, green, and blue. So white is the most intensive color for RGB and black is the least intensive. So that doesn't need any value, while white needs uh, the maximum of all three values. And that's why we call RGB an additive color mode. So it gets brighter the more value we add to it. And uh, 
CMYK is uh, the opposite because if I set this to black, you can see that the CMYK values are actually quite high. Because to be able to create a black uh, value in print, you will have to add a lot of ink. And that's called the subtractive color mode, where you have to reduce the brightness of the original white paper, and you have to keep on adding ink on that paper to get a color. So for CMYK, white will be the complete zero. So here in the color picker, you can get already a bit of understanding of the differences and the similarities between these color modes. Plus, you can also experiment here with colors. So it's a really cool place uh, to just see how colors work in Photoshop. And there's one more thing which is good to know about, and that's the proof colors option under the view menu and also the proof setup. Now, we can see that we are in RGB color mode, but I can switch temporarily to see the CMYK colors on the same image while still keeping the RGB as our color mode. So if I choose proof colors, we will see or simulate the CMYK colors in an RGB image. And I can see that both of these color modes are visible here in the tab. So let's have a look before and after. I press Command or Control Y to switch between these two modes. So set the proof color to be enabled, which is on now, and turn it off to see the original RGB. So that already shows us the main difference between uh, these two color modes. RGB is a very uh, vibrant and intense color range, which has all of these very intense colors. Uh, which is great to see on screen uh, with a projector and it's something that camera can capture and also scanners. Everything, every device that works with, with uh, light. But uh, whenever we have to print this out with inks, it will be difficult to represent this ve these very vibrant and saturated colors. So why is it useful to work with proof colors when we can convert the image? The advantage of working in RGB and uh, just simulating the CMYK colors is that we can still use all the filters that would only be available in uh, RGB mode. So it's enough if you just set first uh, the uh, proofing to CMYK to keep an eye on the colors, how they will look like uh, in print. And at the same time, you will be able to work as if you are working with an RGB image. And of course, if you dive deeper into color profiles and start using proof setup, you would be able to actually simulate a specific color profile of a printer with a specific paper on your screen without actually leaving the RGB color mode. Of course, if you want to have a professionally color managed workflow, that's not enough because you also need to calibrate your screen. So now that we talked about these two main color modes, the RGB and CMYK, and the difference between them, I would like to show you another color mode. I'm just going to turn off the proof colors and go to image mode and choose lab color. Now lab will have three different channels, lightness, A and B. It was designed to be device independent. So it should produce consistent color regardless whether the output is viewed on a monitor screen or it's printed. So these three color components uh, are the ones that make up this uh, color mode. And you have, first of all, a brightness value, which ranges from 0 to 100. So that's lightness. And then we have the two other components, A and B. And from these, the A component consists of a green-red axis, while the B component consists of a blue-yellow axis. So we can see that very easily. If I have the lightness and the A turned on together, we can see that green and red colors. If I turn the A off and I turn the B on, then we can see the blue and yellow colors uh, represented in our image. Using lab color mode, you can make adjustments to the luminosity, which is the lightness of the image, without affecting the colors. And that makes it really unique and very useful for professional image editing. 
you will find loads of tutorials here on touch plus where you are told to use lab color mode and now you will understand why that is important and why is it better than rgb or cmyk there is another mode called grayscale if i switch to this one i will be uh, warned that i'm going to discard the color information in the image if i click on that then we will end up having one channel called gray and this channel will have 256 different shades of gray consisting the pure black and white as well on the two extremes the good thing about this mode is that even though we lost all the color information almost all of the filters are still available and we can still work in layers so i can go in the layers mode and i can create layers and i can also go into filters and as you can see most of these options are available even the camera raw filter is available in grayscale mode but grayscale is not pure black and white as i said it has 256 different shades of gray so if you want to have pure only black and white in your image for that you need to go to image mode and choose bitmap once i click on that for this i will have to flatten my layers so i won't be able to have layers anymore and i have to decide the resolution of this bitmap image so how many pixels per inch i will need in this plus i can also choose a method i'm going to use this one for now just to see how it looks and if i zoom a little bit closer you can see that we will really have only black and white pixels in this uh, image so if i zoom even closer we'll see it's just the way these black and white uh, pixels are scattered around the image that will give us the illusion of tonal differences this is obviously the smallest file size uh, possible because here we only have two different values so this is a one bit depth image the grayscale was 8 bit and rgb is for example 24 bit per image and 8 bit per channel obviously the more bit depth you have in an image the higher the file size will be but the more color choices you have so higher your uh, tonal range will be now that we went all the way to black and white i would like to go back to grayscale and show you what happens if we choose duo tone here we can add a color uh, which will colorize our grayscale image so at the moment it's monotone but i can switch to duotone and then i can choose a color like red and then we can see that is used to colorize uh, the grayscale image or i can choose three tone or quad tone and introduce more inks into uh, our image and then these will be all applied to the same image once again let me just go back instead of choosing this option i'm going to show you that there is another option called indexed color and if i choose that once again the image has to be flattened and whenever you use index color that's actually only available once you are in grayscale mode you won't have any colors but actually the index mode means that you will be able to store 256 different colors in a color palette now if you want to do that the best way to do it is when you are still in rgb mode i just went back to that and go to file save for web instead of using the index color mode uh, option and from here choose gif because this is the option where photoshop will be able to turn the color image into an index color mode so we will have a color table here and we can decide whether we want to use the full range possible for an indexed image uh, like 256 in this case or we want to give less space like 16 or 8 and then obviously there will be less and less colors used to represent the original colors so that's the best way to work with index color images and there's one more color mode called multi-channel which is used mainly for special printing mainly because this mode supports multiple spot colors but you can also end up being in this mode if you delete a channel from an rgb or a cmyk image so that was a quick summary of the things you should know about color modes in Photoshop. And remember channels, the color picker and the soft proofing, which are all useful whenever you want to study these color modes. I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope you will join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention.